how they affected my life in this way. After this, because I'd won the Tony Award, I was offered the lead in a musical which we were rehearsing in New York called Skyscraper and with Julie Harris. And uh, there was an actor in the company. Oh, God, he hated me. Um, hey, Limey, how are you, Limey? Every time I came into rehearsals, good morning, Limey. I won't tell you his name, Dick O'Neill. And um, <laughs> I saw him on Murder, She Wrote the other afternoon, so he's still around. Hey, Limey, who are you, Limey? I never heard of you, Limey. Why are you working on Broadway, Limey? Oh, it's dreadful. So one day I said, look, Dick, this is ridiculous. I tell you what, I said, one day I'll take you to lunch and I'll tell you the story of my life. He said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Who is he? <laughs> Who ever heard of him? <laughs> okay, go on. So anyway, I came out of the hotel. It was the Algonquin Hotel. I came out of the hotel and there was the placard that said, Beatles arrived today in New York. I think this is the day to take Dick O'Neill to lunch. Because all the Beatles fans would be roaming Manhattan looking for signs of where they might be staying. And they'd spot me because they'd seen the film about dozens of times. They'd spot me and they'd follow me thinking I might lead them to where the Beatles were staying. Well, of course, I knew that. Dick O'Neill did not know that. And don't ever tell him, okay? Because we came out of the we came out of the stage in order to go to lunch, and as we were walking along, hadn't gone about half a block, and there were some girls went, "Victor Spinelli, that's a great Victor Spinelli," and then suddenly there's more, "Victor Spinelli," and now we've been chased down the street, "Victor Spinelli," we are running like this, and Dick and Neil says, "Christ, does this happen to you?" I said, "Yeah, all the time, wherever I go." <laughs> <laughs> it was great. So. <laughs> We went into Saudi's, the restaurant that was opposite the Broadhurst Theatre where we play. And we went into the restaurant and Vincent Saudi, hey, Mr. Spinelli, welcome back. A usual table. Very impressive, right? We sit down. We're ordering the meal. And suddenly the waiter turns up with a note on a plate. And the note said, dear Mr. Spinelli, I'm having lunch in this restaurant with my wife. She'd rather sit with you than with me. May we join you? Yours, hopefully, Henry Fonda. <laughs> I'd never met the man in my life. And I said, of course. Well, of course, Henry Fonda's wife was a Beatle fan. Tell me, what are they like? Well, George Plump the Pillars, John Seagull, Seagull, Schweinum. And uh, so we are sitting there, and suddenly a policeman comes in. There are Victor Spinelli in here. I said, yeah. He said, but we've got big problems. Mr. Fonda, sorry, the guests have to leave. We've got big problems. The whole block is jammed outside with your screaming fans. <laughs> what had happened was the rumor had gone round that the Beatles were having lunch in Saudis. There was enough then to stop the traffic in West 44th. Policemen on horseback, like this, riding by, with getting us into this cab. Beating us with, with beating the kids with rolled up cardboard. They put in the cab. The kids swarm on the taxi. We love you, Victor. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> I'm in the cab with Dick O'Neill, who thought that nobody had ever heard of me. Right? We're in this cab. I said, Jesus Christ! And that's when we, I had to hold him up. His, his legs are gone. <laughs> so we get out of the cab. We're now running down to the stage door. <laughs> And as we get to the stage, so a lady comes by. Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm never good at guessing people's ages, you know. I'm timeless. I'm a time lord. I've never known to watch in my life. It's always now. <laughs> and uh, this lady stopped and she said, Victor Spinetti, I am your greatest fan. I am from Uruguay. <laughs> and Dick said, Somebody knows you from Uruguay? Where the fuck is it, right? So <laughs> after that, he carried my bags, and well, we got the plane. <laughs> I would have fainted my life. We got the plane. We flew up to Detroit. We got to Detroit Airport, and there's John Voigt, and John Voigt's with Shelley Winters. Victor, oh, we fucking love you, because <laughs> of the bit. They're all Beta fans. You see what I mean? And that's the effect. It's had on my life. It's actually brought me here today.
You know, the power of the is it's now and uh, going to specifics John I worked on a play with John we wrote a play together based on his books in his own right and Spanish in the works and we're sitting in my flat then in London and it was cold let's go somewhere warm I thought you meant another room <laughs> we ended up in Africa I said, when do we go? He said, well, now. I said, now. I said, I've got to pack. He said, no, you don't have to take anything. He said, well, just go. So I, I'm a Virgo, and you know what I mean? I have my toilet bag, <laughs> my little bits, little pills and things in case they get cold. So we get in the car that night, get in the car. We drive to the, air, to the airport. We get to Casablanca. We get to Casablanca. There's a big limousine waiting to take us across the desert. And John turned to me and said, hey, Vic, you got any money on you? <laughs> I said, no, about, five, about a fiver. He said, that's okay. He said, won't need any money. He said, uh, nobody will know who I am here. It'll be great. So we got out of the car, and ladies in the Ashmax went by and went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't move, and there was a... Uh, there was, um, an invitation to go to this party that the Gettys were giving in Morocco. We got to go, said, but be careful. They eat a lot of hashish here, right? And you're not used to it, okay? I said, right. So we go to this party, and there are these people walking around. There's long white robes with gold bowls. Gold, and in the golden bowls, it looked like mincemeat. You put in mince pies? I, I love my food, as you can tell. And um, mince pies. So I had something... Oh, that's lovely. I'll have, excuse me, I'll have some more of that. Thank you very much. Oh, my God, that's marvelous. I'll have some more of that. And then suddenly, I was into Islamic design. <laughs> and I turned to tell, tell John, who was lying on the floor sick as a dog, so I helped him, got him back, had my thermometer with me, my toilet bag, took his temperature. You got flu. So I, I gave him this. What do you have here for flu powders? Um, what's the name of it? Well, all right, let's call it that. But in England, no, in England they call them beaching powders. So I said, have a pheromone, right? So I gave John one, mixed it up, and I went and then... Went down back to the party, right, to more examinic designs. I had a great time. And uh, the next day, I go in, take his temperature, and he's still got flu. And um, as his statement, the phone rings. And John said, hello. Oh, he said, Vic, I can't face it. I don't feel very well. And the rolling stones are downstairs, all of them. I said, don't worry, I'll go down and tell him you've got flu. So down I went into the lobby, and I said, I'm terribly sorry, I said, but John's got flu, he can't come down. They said, that's okay, we're only here for 20 minutes. I said, really? He said, yep, we just smashed the car, and we ordered another one. I said, of course. And we... <laughs> and Paul O'Brien Jones was with him then, and he had this terrible coat. You know, like a little kid, when they have those like, snot things like that. <laughs> He was like that, and I said, oh, poor thing. So I went back upstairs. I said, don't worry. I said, they, they, just, they just smashed the car, and John said, and they've ordered another one. I said, that's right. I said, so I took him down to this ferro mode, and I said, there you are, Bray. Here's your beach. Here's your powder. He opened the pack and went, oh, thanks, man. I said, that's a beach inspired. He said, yeah. And as he left, the manager came up and said, Mr. Spinetti, please. Do not give your friends things in the lobby of the Mamunia Hotel. I said, it's a pheromone. He said, yeah, that's what they all say. <laughs>